Hello and welcome to today's weekly wind-up from Kirklees Local TV with me, Kyle Warwick. On today's show, we have one of Kirklees Local Television's residents, Dave Hodgson. Welcome to the programme, Dave. Nice to be with you again, Kyle. The two main topics for this week's show are post-election news and the resignation of three of the leaders. Secondly, we have the Conservatives are supposedly changing the Human Rights Act. As we are aware, the general election was held last week with what could only be described as a surprising outcome. The Conservative Party now hold a majority of seats in Parliament, while Labour has lost seats, now holding only 232. And a huge surge from the SNP has led to a majority in Scotland with them holding 56 out of 59 seats available to them. Due to what can only be considered as a bad election for the Liberal Democrats, UKIP and Labour, this has seen the resignation of Nick Clegg, Nigel Farage and Ed Miliband. The anti-austerity protests in London have also made the news after the election. These protests were against the Tories who have wasted no time in announcing the first of what will be many cuts and attacks on personal freedom. As well as the protests being carried out, someone has sprayed graffiti on the Women's War Memorial, spraying Tory scum. Now, Dave... What do you see the need for the anti-austerity protests to I, be? I'm in total, total meltdown over this because I can see both sides of a very desperate situation. We're back to an us and them situation such as I haven't seen since the Thatcher years uh, when a phrase which I often use was coined called second-class citizen. Uh, and to be honest, some people quite like to wear that as a badge of honour because it gives them excuse to break the law while seeming to actually want to uphold it. And I think that applies to both sides, not just one. There are some uh, within the ruling classes, I would think, that also like it because they can legitimately set the police on these lawbreakers, whereas the erstwhile lawbreakers, well, goodness me, what would it be like if no one was allowed to protest about anything that's done by any form of government. That is in a dictatorial situation and we all know where dictators get us to, don't we? So I don't know which is right, but I have to say, spraying graffiti on a war memorial to women who served and lost their life in World War II when we might not be here if it hadn't been for something that one of those did is absolutely unexcusable, but almost understandable. It's, uh, it's one of those situations, I think, especially with the, the spraying of graffiti on the War Memorial, where it's, um, you can understand the anger of the yeah. protesters, yet it undermines the protest itself. The act of vandalism undermines the protest. Yes, it, it demeans it completely. And it also means that the people who are antagonistic to, let's say, the people who are protesting and would like to stop them, have a lot of ammunition to say, look, you see what happens? We must clamp down on these people heavily. It happened with the miners' strike, you know, and uh, I can see a point of saying, well, it's also iniquitous that people who are trying to uphold the law are, as it were, innocently uh, uh, brought into this and injured. But I've witnessed things where those people, and I'm not going to name the name, actually were the instigators of the violence in the first place. So that doesn't work either. And all that happens is people get polarised. If, if you're not with us, you're against us. So two positions polarise, and before you know it, you've got an us and them situation again, and that does nobody any good in the long run. And do, do, you, do you then have fears that we may in the next five years see things escalate into the scale of the miners' strikes. I, I would be very surprised if it goes that far because whatever the current Tory leadership are, they are not so single-minded as... Mar Margaret Thatcher had a clear image of what she wanted to create in Britain. It was a personal image and she gathered people around her that actually would agree with her either to get on or because they didn't say no or because they actually agreed with her. Now, whatever you think about the current Conservatives, they are not like that. They have got 
They've gone beyond that. That doesn't mean to say they wouldn't go back. But I can't see anybody having the stomach for another fight like that because in the end it meant the Tories were out of out of office for how long was it? Uh, 13 years? Mm. And I don't think they'd want that. Um, do you not think maybe that people might be slightly complacent due to the... And I... I I'm afraid to say this, but the calming effect that the Liberal Democrats may have had on the on the Conservatives in the last Parliament. It, it could well be, and there are two causes for that. You could say, like they they say, and and th this is not uh, not untrue that they had a civilising influence on the Tories that they restricted and held back, on, sort of almost on a leech. The the sort of you, you know how, pay, I'll, I'll say, you know how newspapers have a habit of saying loony left. Well, I'm going to say the rabid right and to put, to put a block on them. Now, whether now they will suddenly say, right, this is our charter to undo everything that the Liberals has ever done, I don't know. But I haven't seen evidence of it happening yet. But then we're only days into it, aren't we? Indeed. It could very well happen. I think there's a lot of people with with fears of that happening because of the appointment of a justice minister who's pro-hanging, um, which is a, a, a scary situation. Uh, there's um, We've got an equalities minister who voted against uh, same-sex marriages. Indeed. Um, so I think there's a lot of people out there who, who are worried that this is almost... Conservatives off the leash. The warning signs are there, aren't they? But at the moment, they remain no more than warning signs. But to to be complacent and and not to note them, then I think that's one of the pathways to hell paved in good intentions. Something that I've got from this is that uh, you you look at the reporting on the miners' strikes, and you it was a very at the time, a very singularly narrative reporting of the miners' strikes. It was, it was central media disgusted at the yeah. acts of miners. Um, do you think we're maybe, through social media, getting a more balanced view of what is actually happening I in these protests? I do hope so, because what you have just described is the last 30 years ago, us and them. Mm. And if we're not careful, extremists on both sides will lead us back to another... Because that's what they both want. they both just the other side of the same coin. And if we don't have some sort of middle way, then... I don't think it's going to work. But then what happened? There was New Labour who wanted to be the middle way. Didn't work. Mm -hmm. there's, there's people in the Tory party who want to have consensual, really want cons consensual politics. Doesn't work. So you end up with a situation of zero equals zero on some of these wonderful equations that you can do. And, and you know, you're like, well, nothing works, nothing works. And it can be a bit depressing at the time, I yeah. think, can that? Um, it was certainly a, a completely disastrous election for the Labour Party. The, the, the wholesale wiping out of Labour in Scotland and loss of a lot of seats in, in uh, Labour strongholds would, would in England. Would you have ever thought somebody could do worse for Labour than Gordon Brown did? It's, it's, it's certainly very <laughs> surprising for me. Um, what, what do you see as in, in that tone of you know, Labour maybe trying to take a, a middle ground in the past 20 years? What do you see as being the future of Labour? What are your hopes for the future of Labour? I, I don't know. I, I have to confess, if, if I'm putting my politics on the line, I, I, am, I am a social democrat. Uh, I don't say liberal democrat. I don't say socialist. I, I, I think that the only way that it will work is, is through uh, some sort of consensus in the middle, which is why... I'm kind of in favour of proportional representation. I mean, look what happened. Uh, whatever you think about the party, what happened to UKIP? Absolutely. Nine million votes, one MP. Yeah. However much you don't, you know, uh, the, 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 the Scottish nationalists, what did they get? About three million votes, was it? <laughs> How many MPs? Yeah. Absolutely. It does. It's not fair. No. Did did the Tories get more actual votes than Labour? No, but they're in charge. So yeah. that's why we must try proportional representation. But of course, the problem is it will never come because whatever party wins, they'll say, "Well, we won on a first past the post. Why would we want to alter it?" So therefore, it will never happen. There was a 
time when it started to happen with the uh, with the uh, European Parliament. It was done on a proportional representation. It was soon got rid of with a change of government. Yeah. So it, it it died a death. And to be honest, I'm a bit pessimistic about the future. You know, Carl. I, I, I think we're doomed to repeat history because we don't take enough notice of it. Once history, get like the First World War, gets out of living memory, apart from academic history, history people, everybody's forgotten what happens. Everybody forgot how it got there and how we got out of it. So hey-ho, hell for leather, we seem to be going back into it again. I, I can certainly share in some of the, those fears with you. I would... I would hope maybe that the, there will be some form of reform going forward and I think the fact that conservative majority is tenuous at best and it's expected that there will be a lot of backbench protest voting inside the Conservative Party does give me a certain amount of hope that there may be a level of leash on, on the Conservative Party but I do feel like People in in the north of England, especially, should be preparing themselves for a, a difficult five years. I, I think possibly so. And I believe I've been reading today about a, a, a northern powerhouse, is what they're calling it. Um, uh, they're uh, looking uh, for a conglomeration of Liverpool, not so much, well, possibly Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, Sheffield. Yeah. A, a, a triangulate, uh, as it were, but only on the terms of the government. Not, yeah. not on, we, we can't vote to say what kind of triangulate we can have. We are told it is like that or you cannot have it. So do you see that in any way benefiting the North or, or drawing, stopping that draw from London from the North? No. No. <laughs> Simple answer. It won't work. It won't work because it's putting too much, too much power into the hands of one person, i.e. the mayor, because they've got this idea from America, the mayor runs the town. It's almost like Dodge City and cowboys. Yeah, well, that's fine. But what happens if his politics or her politics don't happen to agree with yours and they've got the casting votes no it's going to be like this it's going to be like hey, you've got a mini dictatorship how can that be good for the north you you're back to the same old same old doing the same old same old again well that's unfortunately all we've got time for on that topic as always if you'd like an input on anything you hear on today's program you can do so by email info at kirkleyslocaltv.com or you can find us on Twitter by searching at The Weekly Windup. On to some local news. This week has seen the University of Huddersfield award of £500,000 to create a Holocaust heritage and learning centre for the North. This means the university will become a major regional centre for studying of the Holocaust, meaning a huge number of teachers, school children, students and also community groups who come over from all over to learn more about what happened at the Holocaust, be it from photographs, testimonies, family letters, or even survivors of this terrible event. Join us after the break, where we will have a look at the changes the Conservatives are wanting to make to the UK Human Rights Act, and we will also have a look at some of more news stories from our local area. However large or small your business, Attracting new customers requires dedication and a lot of patience. Just like fishing, but you also need the right gear. Rods, reels, lines, hooks, sinkers, lures, tackle box, tackle bag, net, bait, gas gloves, clothes, and pocket knife lunch. Or you could simply advertise with KLTV. Online, grow your business and your clientele. KLTV, your vision made reality. Should have gone to KLTV. And welcome back. More local news now. The lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex groups will be coming together to show respect for everyone facing homophobia. The LBGTI communities, which include Huddersfield Gay Group and Sister Shout, just to name a few, will be uniting as one on the steps of Huddersfield's Town Hall on the 18th of May. 
The Awareness Day was created in 2004 to draw the attention to the violence and discrimination the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex communities faced over the years, nationally and internationally. This includes in the 81 countries where same-sex relationships are still illegal and the 70% of the world population who must live under laws and regulations that limit freedom of expression around sexual orientation and gender identity. On to the second of our main topics for this week's show. This is the Conservative government reform to the Human Rights Act in Britain. There has been much speculation about them scrapping the Human Rights Act, but what they actually want to do is change it so it supposedly benefits the United Kingdom. So, Dave, let's have a look at a few of the statements in there. Wow. Um, they're blaming Labour has damaged the credibility of human rights at home. Is that a statement that you'd agree with? I'll quote Mandy Rice Davis. Well, they would, wouldn't they? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a, a cross-party... I think if we had Labour in power now, they'd probably be saying the same about yep. uh, the Conservatives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, the thing is, I, I, I listened to what you said there. It's not something I have read in great detail, but I do did notice something that they said, oh, and, and, and do away with uh, the things that are no longer viable, as it were. I know that I'm, I'm paraphrasing there, mm. but they don't say what that is. Yeah. So are they giving themselves carte blanche to do what Mrs Thatcher used to do? Pick a mix, we'll have that, we won't have that, we'll have that bit, we don't want that. And before you know it, the human, it's just a mockery. It's not a human rights bill, it's a government rights bill. In other words, you know, if you don't toe the line, then we're going to find some way where you will not be able to take us to court and say you are denying us our human rights. But really, to interfere with a human bill of rights that has been, let's face it, put together by an elected assembly, you know, they, they are talking as if the European Union is a dictatorship. No, we vote MEPs in. It is not what they accuse it of being. It is an elected body. Now, whether they want to take notice of it or not, I don't know. But if they don't, then, well, goodness me, why should Huddersfield Council take notice of what Parliament say? If, they, if, if it isn't, well, oh, well, they, you know, they're not elected by us. We don't want it, so we will set our own Bill of Rights out for Huddersfield. Where does it end? And they're on a bit of a slippery slope, I think, with that. Absolutely. Do you, do you feel that the, there's enough clarity coming out of the Conservative Party in regards to the changes that they would like to make? Oh, they would hope not. <laughs> they would hope it's as, you know, it, it, it's as clear as mud, you know what I mean? Because if you, if you can make it... Uh, th there's a famous phrase that I think I invented a long time ago for things like this. If you can make people so they have to swim in blancmange, by that I mean you can't feel the floor and you can't see either, it's much worse than water, uh, then, then you keep them confused. They're on the back foot, you know. So if they're on the back foot, we can poke them in the eye, meta metaphorically, of course, I'm saying with that. And it's all a way of disadvantaging your, your, your shall we say, your electoral foes. Indeed, I think um, a lot of the public in general are worried, and certainly I'm worried because of a lot of the statements coming from Theresa May, um, which is the comments and the, the, certainly the, the doctrine that she's putting out there, it, it seems extremely general, um, talking about radicalisation, about extremism, without really saying what is meant Indeed. by these phrases yes. and that leaves the interpretation open to the lawmakers yep. which means that that can then be used as you yeah, put it yeah, carte blanche yeah. against uh, anybody yeah. that disagrees essentially at, at the moment to a certain extent the eu can overrule british courts mm. uh, there are those that, whoa, whoa, how dare you know what I mean but with this that would probably mean that our government could overrule the British courts what are we getting into here so if they don't have oh he's a, a terrorist you know which is probably somebody who has done the graffiti that we were talking about earlier absolutely abhorrent as it is but oh terrorist 
slam him up, lock away the key, you know, lock him up, throw away the key. Mm. It's leading back to that. And no, I got, a, I got an email from an old friend the other day, uh, just after the election, and put on it, welcome back to the second five years of the new dark age. <laughs> and I've, I've, I hope it isn't, but some things I feel are heading in that direction. And I, we're almost sleepwalking, I know it's a common phrase, but mm -hmm. we're almost sleepwalking back into the 1920s and 30s, I think. I mean, uh, certainly one of my big fears is the, uh, we, we already have brought in, in the past five years, uh, secret courts where people can be tried without knowing what they're being tried for, without mm. being able to see any of the evidence against them, without being in the courtroom where they're tried, without knowing the people who are providing evidence against them. The old and sus laws. I, I, I fear a situation where you can be arrested, and tried, on the back foot. put in prison, and nobody will be able to know why you are there. It is po it's a I mean, possibility. It, it's, a, it's a terrifying situation mm. to me. Mm. I mean, there's a, it's certainly, I think, there's a lot of things for people to be worried about. And one of my, my big things, I think, about this, about uh, the, the Human Rights Act was set out by people after the Second World War yep. who had been dealing with very stark images of good and bad very, very stark images of good and bad. And I, I don't think there's anybody at, about at this time uh, in power who can have such whole understanding of good and evil. And I think there are so many gray areas coming into it now. Yeah, yeah. you've hit the nail right on the head because now what's starting to happen is the Second World War is starting to in slowly, but inexorably, slip out of human memory. I mean, when the Second World War ended, I was only two, you know, so what memories have I got of it? None at all. And, but so it's people that are older than me who are start, you know, I, I hate to say this, but not it, there's not as many of them as there used to be that were, mm. were, that were lads that fought for us in World War Two, And I just fear that it all gets forgotten and we start slipping into that situation again. And before we know it, you're back there and somebody's saying, I'm, you know, I'm for freedom, I'm for our country, uh, you, us first. And goodness me, I've got a nasty feeling that one A Hitler started by saying that, <laughs> which wasn't very innocuous, it was a bit innocuous at the time, but what did it become? Um, some of the, I think, I believe there's some of the changes. The European Court of Human Rights would no longer have binding over the UK Supreme Court. Correct. Um, the European Court of Human Rights would no longer be able to order a change in UK war and becomes an advisory body only. Yeah. And there is a proper balance between rights and responsibilities in UK war. A lot of ambiguities in there. You can drive a coach and six through that, if you don't mind me using it, you know. I mean, it says, it's, it's fine words. You know, you've heard the expression, F fine words butter no parsnips. It's just fine words. But then, oh, come on, every, every political party is guilty of that. There's no one, one totally guilty party. Uh, just to change the subject for a moment, I hope you don't. I I'm really sorry for you if you're a badger because life is going to get very difficult for you. <laughs> yeah, not just badgers, I suspect. No, no, I just say that as a, as a light note. Indeed. Um, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on that topic. We could talk for much, much longer, I'm sure. Dave? Can I just say that if anybody totally disagrees with what I said or anything, please, you've got... Get in touch. Absolutely. Tell us where we're going wrong. Please. On to more local news. After the community of Huddersfield have waited so long for their new and improved leisure centre, it is nearly time for it to open. After nearly 10 years of planning, the £36 million centre will open its doors to the public on the 18th of May at 6.30am. The leisure centre, which is an upgrade of the old sports centre on Leeds Road, will have the usual as well as a state-of-the-art gym, a new splash pool with slides, making it a great fun for all the family. Once again, that's all we have time for on the weekly wind-up. Thank you to Dave Hodgson for joining us this week. 
If you'd like to get in contact with the Weekly Wind-Up with anything you've heard today, do so by email info at kirklyslocaltv.com or find us on Twitter, search at the Weekly Wind-Up. I've been Kyle Warwick, thank you and goodbye. Thank you.